Secretary of State Mike Pompeo tearing into John Kerry for meeting with Iranian officials and undermining the Trump administration. Secretary Kerry can't seem to get off the stage. Stop it. Let it go. Uh, you had your day. Uh, we, we think you fundamentally got it wrong with Iran, and we're trying to make it right for America. Right. Our next step, uh, our next guest is taking a step further, sending a letter to the DOJ asking them to investigate whether John Kerry violated federal law. Joining us now is Senator Marco Rubio, Foreign Relations Committee. Senator, what makes you, I think it's inappropriate, it seems, especially because yeah. he has an anti-Trump agenda and he makes it clear on every appearance he makes. But what makes you think it might be breaching, uh, breaching the law? Uh, the words in the law. Uh, there's a thing called the Logan Act that right. kind of took quick notes again this morning to make sure I had read it entirely and appropriately because I wanted to bullet point it for you. And basically what it says in the Logan Act is if there's a U.S. citizen that without the authority of the U.S. government is talking to a foreign government with the intent of influencing the conduct of that government or with the intent to defeat a measure of the U.S. government, the Logan Act makes that illegal. Now, we know for a fact, for example, and that, that Kerry has said himself he's talked to the foreign minister of Iran three or four times. We've seen reporting that he's been telling that he's been calling foreign heads of state. And we have seen reporting that he has been talking to foreign heads of state and telling them to wait Trump out when it comes to the Iran deal. So when you apply the things that have been reported in the media that we're told we should always believe, and you apply those facts, according to the media, to what we know the law is, that merits an investigation because this is someone who is operating without the authority of the government. He's not a member of Congress, he's not a senator, and he most certainly has not been deputized by the Trump administration to conduct these talks and try to undermine U.S. policy. Would it be hard to prove intent? You'd have to prove that he was trying to influence them. Well, obviously, you know, I, I don't think that he would necessarily deny it. In fact, it seems like he's been bragging about yeah. it. Um, he thinks he's doing a heroic thing, but he's violating the law if that's what he's doing. So ultimately, this needs to be looked at because not only should there be consequences if he's in fact done it, but the precedent mm. that this sets is disturbing. You cannot here on moving forward have in the future, Mike Pompeo, for example, undermining a Democrat's, uh, pre Democratic president's foreign policy without authority. So these are the kinds of things that, that need to be dealt with right. because not just right. what happened, but the precedent it sets for the future. Now, keep in mind, he did bring this up last, this was brought up to him last night, and he said, well, listen, Henry Kissinger has met with every world leader for the last two or three decades. What's your answer to that? Well, no one said it's not illegal to meet with, with heads of state from other countries. What is illegal is a concerted effort to use that to undermine the foreign right. policy of the United States. If he is in fact meeting with these leaders and working with them and others to figure out how to undermine U.S. foreign policy or encouraging them to wait out the United States and so forth, then he's violating the Logan Act. So meeting is one thing, carrying out with the intent of undermining U.S. foreign policy, according to the Logan Act, that's a violation of the law. And the last uh, famous American who is accused of uh, violating the Logan Act? Mike Flynn. What, what happened to him? Uh, meanwhile, uh, Senator, let's talk a little bit about this. Um, it sounds as if uh, Charles Grassley has given uh, Dr. Christine Ford's lawyers until tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning to let them know whether or not she's going to show up to testify uh, against, essentially, Brett Kavanaugh on Monday. It sounded like when she was writing in the uh, Washington Post last weekend, she wanted to tell her story. Why do you think she is now balking at coming before Congress to tell that story? Well, obviously, I, I don't know. Uh, one could speculate that that's a very uncomfortable position to be in. And I understand that. And here's my, my point. This information emerged probably later than it should have. It certainly mm -hmm. should have been disclosed earlier. It could have been dealt with in a very different way. It was not. So this information was brought before us. I believe that it deserves serious attention and respect. Uh, and we should hear from Judge Kavanaugh, too, who has strongly denied it. I encouraged and I wanted the committee under Senator Grassley to provide her an opportunity in a form mm -hmm. she was comfortable in to sort of sit, share this information. And she's been given that opportunity, is my understanding, to either do it publicly or do it privately. And, but ultimately, if that doesn't happen, number one, she shouldn't be criticized for not doing it. Number two, we can't force her and we shouldn't try to. But then the Senate has to move forward based on the information we have before us. And, um, and so ultimately, it's a difficult choice, I imagine, for someone like her to make. But it, it ultimately, we've got to move forward one way or the other here on this. And uh, I think the important thing from the Senate perspective is that she be provided a professional and respectful, incredible platform if she chooses to testify right. to do so. 
and it appears that that's been what's offered. Right. Ultimately, the decision is hers to make, and that should be respected either way. If we don't hear from her on Monday or from him in turn, which way, given what you know right now about him, would you vote on the confirmation? Well, so we can only make votes depending on the information mm -hmm. that's before us and that's that's credible and that, that can be proven or that at least... So if, if ultimately we've seen sort of these allegations that have been out there in the press, but no testimony about it hasn't been presented and no further information has been made available, we've heard his denials, and I imagine that's what we'd hear again on Monday at that hearing. And then based on that information, and not just that, but everything else we know about Judge Kavanaugh, we'll have to make a decision. And uh, I continue to be supportive of his nomination. I, um, if, if there is credible information that emerges that somehow undermines that, I'll let everybody know. And mm -hmm. obviously the form, if there is such information out there, it is the job of the committee to provide a form for that information to be made available. But you can't force someone to provide that. And, uh, we sh and, and so ultimately we'll have to move forward based on what we know. And, uh, and that is, you know, his years of experience on the bench and you know, 12 years on the circuit court mm -hmm. already in D.C. And, and move forward from there. Right. Okay. And I imagine uh, the vote could take place next week. We'll see. Thank you. Yeah, that's what it was scheduled to be. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Nice seeing you, Senator Marco Rubio.